What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today we're in my new Polestar 2 and we're gonna be doing some minor interior improvements. We're gonna be removing the piano black. So as I mentioned, we're gonna be doing some minor interior improvements here. So I had the dealer leave the um, screen protector on the touch screen here. So I'm gonna put a Spigen matte screen protector and we're gonna be getting rid of this very obnoxious and already quite fingerprinted piano black around the shifter. So we're gonna start with removing this and I'm, gonna, I'm going to actually bring it inside and wrap it with some satin black vinyl. And then we'll come back out when I reinstall this and install a matte screen protector on the screen as well. And luckily this is already fairly satin, so we don't need to do anything there. And it's not gonna be easy to do anything about this piano black, but such is life. So to remove this, you could use some trim tools, but I'm just gonna use my hands here. And I already did pop this off once, so it might be a little bit easier. But let me just pop this off here. And now we have this free, so I unplug the connector there, and then we've got some Torx bits that we'll take off once we get inside to do the vinyl. So now we have the trim piece inside, and we're going to remove the controls panel here. So I'm setting it down on microfiber here so I don't scratch it as I set it down. And we're gonna be removing these four black Torx T15 screws. So a little control panel here removed. Like I said, four Torx T15 screws. Set that off to the side. Now we're going to clean this off, get all the fingerprints off with some rubbing alcohol right there. And we're gonna apply the vinyl wrap. Future editor Brandon here. You are going to want to use quality vinyl because I did not when I filmed this video and did my initial wrapping of the center console and it ended up peeling about two days later. So I ended up redoing it with 3M 2080 vinyl, which I'll link down below. Um, I went with the satin black, but you can go with whatever color makes sense for you and definitely make sure you tuck the edge as well. So that would be my advice before you watch my directions on how to install the vinyl. And also the 3M 2080 vinyl is a lot easier to work with. It's thinner, it's more tacky, it is more expensive, but trust me, it's worth it. So here we have the satin black vinyl. I did not get matte because matte vinyl is just obnoxious to keep clean. Peeling off the backing here, and like I said, we already cleaned this with the rubbing alcohol. This piece is a bit larger than we need, which makes it a little bit easier. So we'll just kind of plop it on here. Got a little squeegee here. And we'll just work out the air bubbles here, kind of start in the middle so that we can work them all out towards the edges. And we're just kind of getting the flat surfaces first. And then we'll go back in and we'll get the curved surfaces. Might need to pull it up and reposition a little bit here and there. And use a little bit of heat here with the heat gun over the curve. Very lightly. So it's a bit tricky here with this curve. So I'm just repositioning here. I've got that mostly worked out here. Just gonna peel this quick. Gonna shrink that a little bit. Like I was saying, this is kind of tricky to work with. And there we go, so now I've got it kind of contoured there to reposition this corner here. Kind of when you fix one problem, you might create a little bit of another one. Not 
parts, the joys of working with a three-dimensional piece like this. You can see we've got it pretty nice and flat here on all the important surfaces. So now we're going to go in here on these surfaces and we're going to cut it. So I'm gonna do an X here on each of these corners so that way we can tuck it around the edges. And I'm not an expert at wrapping, but I've done enough to be halfway decent at it, I'd say. So I'm just gonna take that out there. And the wonderful part is this is just going to be hidden, all of these under flaps, because it's gonna be covered, so it doesn't really matter. apply a little bit of heat here so it's a little bit easier to work in. Just gonna try and get it as stuck underneath here as possible so that the edge is nice and covered so you don't still have piano black showing. Massage it a little bit and then we can go back in and trim it afterwards. Now we're going to do the same here for the button area. Definitely having a nice and sharp blade is pretty helpful for this. And it's kind of funny, I haven't even had this car 24 hours and I'm already doing modifications like this. So we're again gonna heat this up a little bit. We're just massaging all the edges inward there. Now I'm going to go around the edges here and cut some of the excess off, but we're going to leave enough that we can also tuck those as well. Excess vinyl. And now we're going to tuck all these edges as well. So a little bit of heat here. curves are where it gets a little bit tricky because you will actually see that. So we're going to apply a little bit of heat. And use the vinyl tool to work that out a little bit. Then we'll reinstall, or sorry, we'll trim some of this excess vinyl now that we have it a bit tucked. So just go all the way around for that. And I will link all these products down below for you guys and make it a little bit easier to do this yourself.
now that we've got all the vinyl tucked, we're gonna put the buttons back in. Make sure that looks all right. Not catching the vinyl at all. Just make sure this is good. Excellent. And now we're just gonna put those T15 screws back in. And I would normally recommend using hand tools, but this is what I had readily available, and I'm using it very carefully, but for most people, hand tool is the better choice. So you are screwing these into plastic, which can strip fairly easily. They don't need to be over tight, because they're just holding buttons in. Right, just like that. So there we have it. We do have some fingerprints kind of all around, but that is fine. We'll wipe those off. And then now we've got a matte or satin black console surround rather than glossy piano black. Then we'll go back out to the car, install this and the matte screen protector. I'll see you out there. And we're back in the car. So you can see this all kind of popped out here and it's time to put things back together. So let's take our newly wrapped trim piece and put it back on and we're not going to forget to plug in the connector and just like that it did take a little bit of massaging and a little bit of fighting to get this 100 percent in place but we now have a satin black shifter surround and it looks so much better so now it's time to do the screen protector so here you can see i have the spigen anti-glare uh glaster easy fit screen protector for the polestar 2 and I'm going to open this up and then we'll peel off the factory screen protector and put this on. So here you can see the little toolkit you get with the screen protector. So you get some dust removal stickers, screen cleaner, uh, wipes, and the squeegee tool. And you get the actual screen protector itself with the applicator. So pretty nice. It works around the dash. So let me just show you how this goes on there. I obviously haven't peeled the backing yet. But just like that makes it pretty darn easy to apply. It's like a giant phone screen protector basically. All right, so I peeled off the screen protector from the factory and gave it a nice wipe down with some alcohol. And now I'm just giving it a final wipe down with this little cloth that they include. Then we're gonna go ahead and apply the screen protector. And future Brandon here again, to put the screen into screen clean mode, press and hold the power button, the little strip at the bottom of the screen, and then you can actually power off the entire system. That will make it easier for both cleaning the screen and being able to see things and for installing the screen protector without pressing things or messing anything up. And to turn the screen back on afterwards, just press, uh, I believe the play button or press the brake again afterwards, and that will power the screen back on. And I did the press and slide. Now I'm just waiting the 30 seconds they recommend and hopefully it turned out all right. So we've released it from the frame and now we just need to peel this uh, layer of sorts. And now we reveal the very nice matte finish. Very, very nice. Well, hopefully you guys found this video helpful to get rid of and manage the fingerprints on your Polestar 2. Here's my Polestar 2. And again, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you wanna see future Polestar and other EV content, hit the subscribe button. And if you're looking to buy the products I talked about today, just hit the links down below.